Welcome, my dear learners, for this course on Design of Machine Elements 2. In our module 3, we were discussing about design of spur gears and helical gears. So far, we have completed our discussion on design of spur gears. In this lecture, I will be introducing you people for the design of helical gears. Let us discuss the procedure to design the helical gear completely. In order to design the helical gear, as we discussed in case of spur gear, for helical gear also, the procedure almost remains same. Only difference is the formulas. Apart from that, before entering to the steps to design the helical gear, one should know the prerequisites. These prerequisites are, the first prerequisite is, in what form we should solve the module equation. Second prerequisite is the number of teeth on pinion and also the number of teeth on gear. The third prerequisite is that the material details of gear and pinion and their respective allowable static strengths. If we know these three prerequisites, we can start designing the helical gear. As I mentioned, the prerequisite are if the pitch circle diameter of pinion and gear are not known or not given then solve module equation in the form of mn cube cv or if the pitch circle diameters of both pinion and gear are known to us or given in the question then solve the model equation in the form of mn square by from design that I know the model equation is given by equation number 12.24 b page number 214 where mn stands for normal module and y stands for Lewis form factor let us take mn cube cv as type 1 problems and mn square y as type 2 problems same as what we have discussed in design of square gears this is the first prerequisite to start design of helical gears. When you go through the question, you should decide whether the pitch circle diameter is known to us or not known to us and you should decide what form of model equation to be used. Moving on to our second prerequisite that is number of teeth on pinion and gear. Similar to the design of spur gears, if number of teeth are not given then for mn cube cv type problems that is the problems in which the pitch circle diameter are not known assume number of teeth on pinion as 20 and adopt the number of teeth you assume number of teeth on pinion as 20 and adopt it and take the value as 20 and solve the problem whereas in case of mn square y type of problems assume z1 is equal to 20 teeth only to find the weaker member only to find the weaker member once you find the weaker member z is equal to d cos beta by mn from equation 12.19 b page number 2 11 in the data and book till you find the actual number of peaks that is for type 1 problems in which you don't know the pitch circle diameter you assume the number of peaks on pinion as 20 and adopt it and solve the problem completely whereas the problems in which you know the pitch circle diameter you assume the number of teeth on pinion as 20 only to find which is a weaker member once you find out which is a weaker member thereafter you always replace z by d cos beta by mn 
using equation 12.19 D from page number 211 until you find the actual number of teeth on pinion and also on gear. Next, moving on to our third prerequisite that is material details. If the materials of pinion as well as gear are not known to us or not given in the question, then from table 12.22, page number 241, assume the material for pinion as 0.4% to 0.5% carbon steel untreated and you will get sigma d1 as 70 mega pascals and also if material is given and the allowable static strength is not mentioned in the question then refer table 12.22 page number 241 now as we did in gear, use sigma d1 y1 is equal to sigma d2 y2 the product of allowable static strength of pinion and its Lewis form factor must be equal to the product of allowable static strength and Lewis form factor of gear. Since the Lewis form factor equation is not available for helical gears, we should convert the number of teeth on helical gear to the equivalent number of teeth on spur gear and then use the equations which are available in the spur gear design and find out the Lewis form factor. Therefore, our step one is not to find the weaker member it is to find the Lewis form factor and using this equation you should find sigma d2 once you know the value of sigma d2 compare the value what you have obtained from table 12.22 page number 241 adopt the closest value what you have obtained and adopt the corresponding material for gear and one more important note is that in the equation of z number of teeth we have beta beta is nothing but the helix angle if helix angle is not given in the question then from table 12.20 page number 241 assume the helix angle as 23 degrees. So all these references are from the design data and book written by K. Mahadevan and Balvir Reddy. I am referring 4th edition. With these prerequisites we can start the design procedure for helical gears. If the number of teeth is given it is well and good. If it is not given use the procedure what I have mentioned. If the materials of both pinion and gear is given, it is well and good. If it is not mentioned in the question, use the third prerequisite which I have discussed. With these prerequisites, let us move on to our first step to find the Lewis form factor for gear as well as for pinion. Moving on to our step 1 to find the Lewis form factor. First, you find the virtual number of teeth, teeth that is Z equivalent is equal to Z divided by cos cube beta. Equation 12.22A page number 211. That is virtual number of teeth equivalent to square gear of pinion as well as gear by substituting the actual number of teeth of pinion and gear given in the helical gear design. Once you find the virtual number of teeth, now determine what is the equivalent teeth in spur gear therefore using z equivalent 1 and z equivalent 2 find the Lewis form factor using equations 12.5c to 12.5e at page number 204 by replacing z by z equivalent therefore you will get y1 and y2 so this is a procedure to determine the Lewis form factor for helical gas next moving on to our step 2 to find the weaker member formulate the table as we did in the spur gear that is particulars allowable static strength Lewis form factor product of these two and the remark under particulars we have pinion and gear fill up the respective values the lowest valued sigma dy will be the weaker member and design should be made for the weaker member. Moving on to step 3 to find the module, use equation 12.24b available in page number 214, we will get the module equation. Formulate this model equation as per our first prerequisite that is whether to solve this equation with respect to m n cube 
CV or MN cube. Why? Depending on the pitch circle diameter known to us or not known to us. Where MT is the torque which is given by 9.5 into 10 to the power of 6 into P by N into service factor. Where P is in kilowatts and N is in RPM. If CS service factor is not given then use table 12.8 page number 235 assuming medium shocks with 8 to 10 hours per day of working we can take the value as 1.5 moving on to CW is the wear lubrication factor if not given from table 12.21 page number 241 assuming scant lubrication we can take the value as 1.25 where beta is the helix angle if not given take it as 23 degrees from table 12.20 page number 241 moving on to the value of sigma d sigma d is already known to us cv coming for cv very important note is that use 12.25 a for velocities less than 5 meters per second use e equation 12.25 b for velocities between 5 to 20 meters per second there is a printing mistake happened it is not 5 to 10 meters per second it is 5 to 20 meters per second don't use Bratz formula Next, moving on to the value of k, k is given by b by mn, where if b is not given, that is phase width, assume the phase width as 10 times the normal module, we will get the value of k as 10. Coming for the capital Y, capital Y is given by pi times the small y, where small y is the Levy's form factor. By knowing these values, substituting to this equation, we can find mn cube cv or mn square y required value. Next, using the trial and error method, what we have followed in the design of spur gear, find the mn cube cv or mn square by adopting value such that the adopting value must be greater than the required value. Once the adopting value is greater than required value, adopt the module for the problem. So the trial and error method remains same what we have discussed for spur gears. Moving on to our third step. Checking for stress. Moving on to our fourth step. Moving on to our fourth step that is for checking the stress. Now we already know that allowable stress is given by sigma d into cv. Find the allowable stress. To find the induced stress from e equation 12.24a page number 214, we have the formula for tangential load. Rearrange this tangential load such a way that we will get sigma d cv induced where the value of tangential load is given from equation 12.8a page number 206 here d should be determined with the help of equation 12.19e page number 211 this is because of the reason we are not finding the module we are finding the normal module and find the value of induced stress for design to be safe the allowable stress must be greater than or equal to induced stress Moving on to our step 5, that is to find the factor of safety. Factor of safety is given by the ratio of equation 12.24a to the equation 12.8a. If I substitute and rearrange, I will get the equation in this form. Substitute all the values and simplify, you will get the factor of safety. The factor of safety should always be greater than 1. Moving on to our step 6, to find the dynamic load. Use equation 12.26a available in page number 214 to find the dynamic load. The only unknown in that equation is the dynamic factor C. To find this dynamic factor C, use the same procedure what we have adopted in designing of spur gear. That is, first you find the value of error using table number 12.13 if class of gear is known or if class of gear is not known or not given, use table number 12.14. Once you find the error, use table number 12.12 to find the dynamic factor by interpolation. Once you know the dynamic load, moving on to our step 7 that is wear load. In this wear load, formulate in two different manner. One is to verify the design from strength point of view, another one is to find the BHN. If BHN is given in the question and asked to verify the design from strength point of view, then find the value of wear load. In this equation, the only unknown is K. 
to find k already phd is known to us refer to table 12.16 available in page number 239 using the value of k and the tooth form what we are solving that is for 20 degree involute or 20 degree stub or 49 half degree and the material details whether we are solving for steel and steel combination or steel and iron combination we can find the value of k once we find the value of k substitute to this equation you will get the value of wear load verify whether wear load is greater than or equal to dynamic load for design to be safe from strength point of view wear load should be greater than or equal to dynamic load or if he is asked to recommend the bhn then you should use wear load is equal to the dynamic load already we know the value of dynamic load solve and find the value of k once you find the value of k from table 12.16 available in page number 239 using the value of k recommend the bhn for both pinion and gear this is the complete design of helical gear that's all from this lecture thank you